following paid commercial program is brought to you by TD Wealth. Welcome to Money Talk. I'm Greg Bennell sitting in for Kim Parley. Well, there's no shortage of geopolitical events vying for the attention of investors these days, whether it be the conflict in Ukraine, political instability in the Middle East, or even, yes, balloons floating over from China. But are all of these events notable from an investing standpoint? For perspective, we're joined now by Marco Popich, chief strategist from Clock Tower Group. Great to be back with you, Marco. Want to start with the balloon incident. Obviously, it captured the attention of a lot of people over the last several days. What does it do for U.S.-China relations, if anything? Well, I mean, it's not going to really do much because the U.S.-China relationship was um, in a pretty dire straits to begin with. And uh, a lot of American commentators basically um, started saying that China was focusing on you know, charming the U.S., launching one of their charm offensives. But really, the Chinese have shifted their foreign policy after the October Congress, not because of the U.S. Uh, Beijing understands very well that domestic politics in the U.S. are a constraint on improving the relationship, especially with a Democratic president who's going to be accused of being weak on China if he were to relent the pressure ahead of the U.S. election. And so really, the Chinese charm offensive is focused on the rest of the world. And in the rest of the world, outside of sort of the American political chamber, this incident has been uh, watched with incredulity, incredulity and uh, honestly some comedy. And so it's not really going to um, impact the broader global um, relationship between the West and China. So it doesn't sound like from this incident, even though it captured our imaginations for several days, uh, that we're going to worry about any really economic fallout or even financial market impact. No, I think the U.S. was going to put pressure on China regardless. So the October 7th, for example, Commerce Department export ban on, semi, on advanced semiconductors to China, that's something we should continue to expect. I think there's going to be other sectors that the U.S. is going to start focusing on, whether it's biotech, whether it's uh, you know green technology. U.S. is going to start coming out with new uh, export bans against China over the next 12 months because the Biden administration has to prove its tough. But that was going to happen regardless of the balloon. You talked, to, you talked about the global community watching what transpired as well. And I guess everyone waiting for an American reaction, which you eventually got when the balloon was shot down. Is there any uh, a follow for the current administration? I mean, domestically, you know, their opponents are always going to say you didn't do the right thing. But internationally, is there any sort of weakening of America's posture? Uh, no, absolutely not. I mean, weakening or strengthening, honestly. I mean, look. Let's pause, let's step back, maybe take a cold shower as well. Uh, there was a political article uh, six months ago, six months ago detailing a US intelligence balloon program that American officials publicly were quoted in the political article saying would target China and Russia. You know, all is fair in love and war and strategic competition. So this changes literally nothing. All right, let's stay on China, but we'll get off the balloon issue. I appreciate your <laughs> insights on that. Let's talk about the economic reopening. Obviously, it uh, happened perhaps a, a little quicker, a pivot quicker than people thought. Uh, now that we're sort of into the early innings of it, well, what do we think about it? I mean, is there a bullish case to be made for China here as they reopen that economy? Well, you know, well, first of all, the um, northbound flows into A shares through the Hong Kong uh, interconnect have never been stronger. And this is one of the reasons why many onshore managers in China are actually confused. You know, they're looking at it like, what's wrong with these Western investors? In 2022, they tell us that we are bastion of Maoist communism and therefore uninvestable. And in 2023, they're all rushing uh, into our equity market. What's going on? Um, so onshore managers in China are actually a little bit more cautious. Um, they are in a wait and see mode. Why? Well, because they're afraid that the household sector in China is pretty leveraged already. And so Chinese policymakers may be pushing on a string with some of the interest rate cuts, mortgage rate cuts, um, and real estate um, uh, fiscal stimulus. You know, So they want to see whether consumers in China actually start buying. Uh, but in terms of data, I think a lot of investors are starting to get cold feet because January data wasn't great. But January data wasn't great because literally everyone in China got COVID. Uh, and second, because um, the New Year festival was brought forward this year on January 22nd. So the data in January hasn't yet confirmed anything bullish. I remain bullish. I think for the rest of the year, there'll be two steps forward, one step back kind of a thing in China. 
Uh, but, you know, investors should probably overweight China over the next six to 12 months. Marco, so much going on in the world. I want to get your one minute take on this, and perhaps it's unfair for me to put that kind of a limit on you. But all this focus on Ukraine, and obviously uh, this is worthy of focus, but does it mean that perhaps we're taking our eye off of some other parts of the world? Yes. So Ukraine ended up not having any impact on commodity markets. You know, there was a run up in oil prices, wheat, but eventually commodities sold off pretty broadly in 2022. That's not going to be the case if Iran and the West uh, have a conflict in 2023. So I'm watching that very carefully. I think geopolitics in the Middle East are where we should be spending most of our time as investors. All right, Marco, stick with us. He is going to stay with us. Joining us next, Michael Craig of TD Asset Management. We're going to review the latest comments from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, the state of inflation, and the chances of a recession. You're watching Money Talk.